This is Britain's busiest airport, with nearly half a million planes taking off and landing every year. It's currently Europe's number one airport. But competition from abroad is hotting up. Are you sweating as well? Me too. And with nearly 80 million passengers expected through Heathrow this year. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. Your ambulance, please. It's down to the army of nearly 77,000 staff to keep their airport at the top of the table. My pleasure. There'll be some familiar faces and some new ones. It's your back garden. You're in charge of this. You're the landlord. On the airfield, in the terminal. Can you see the knife? I can see it. And for the first time... Passports out of your pockets, please. We'll go to the front line of Britain's biggest border. So if you just look at me, straight on, your head up. Everyone is working harder than ever to keep Heathrow at number one. They left their ticket. Today, the freezing breath of the beast from the east has brought temperatures plummeting to minus four on Heathrow's airfield. In Terminal 2, Sue and her team are feeling the knock-on effect. LX357 cancel, yeah. SN2096 with 103 passengers. Right. LX has got 118 passengers. Whilst there's no snow at Heathrow, the rest of Europe has had a ton of it. Unfortunately, this issue is um, abroad and not here. So we're doing all right today. I think it's the other countries, so just bear with us. Which has led to multiple cancellations across the continent. Well, we were in the air going from Boston to Dublin. They closed down Dublin, so here we are. The beast from the east? Yeah, you want that one. You want That's that right. yeah. <laughs> The beast from the east. Meanwhile, outside on the tarmac, although there's no snow, the sub-zero temperatures are causing a problem for departing planes. This Boeing 777 with 354 passengers on board is scheduled for departure to Florida, but it can't go anywhere until British Airways ground staff remove every vestige of ice from the aircraft. Ice changes the shape of a plane's wings, which disrupts the flow of air and reduces lift when taking off. Very dangerous, if not de-iced. It's so important to de-ice an aircraft uh, for the safety of our passengers and the aircraft itself. Mike is part of the de-icing team for British Airways. On average, it takes them just six minutes per aircraft. The fluid that comes out of these de-icing the rigs is heated between 65 and 85 degrees. So that steam coming from the winds, that's uh, hot fluids going onto a cold surface. The average plane takes over 1,000 litres of fluid to de-ice it, which for all airlines costs upwards of £5,000 per plane. I mean, I can, I can imagine that none of the customers on board know what we're actually doing. They're probably just all tucked up watching their film. There's us out here, <laughs> the ice and aircraft. Passengers who may not realize their plane is being de-iced may also be unaware who their fellow passengers are on board. Something Border Force is always keen to know. Sierra 20, Sierra 20 from Sierra 2 Portery. Yeah, could you give me an update on the MS-777? What's its ETA, please? Border Force Bob is waiting for a flight to arrive from the Middle East. Showing on stand 244. Estimate chocks are showing up 1314. Chocks 1314. Confirm that. Cheers. Bye. So, we've received information that a passenger who's known to us is arriving on a certain flight in about 45, 50 minutes from now. This person has, in the past, been implicated in possibly bringing people into the UK illegally. All airports are potential hubs for people trafficking. Adults or children are brought in by a facilitator, someone who pretends to be a friend or relative, and are then forced into labor or sexual exploitation. Most facilitators travel on false documents, something that Bob is expert in. We handle thousands of passports and ID cards a day. We know what every one of them looks like. We know how they feel in your hand. 
how much they weigh you. Yeah, you're available on the And as soon as you get something that's wrong, it's like alarm bells go off in your head. There's no background blue, is there? And it might, it might be something just stupidly obvious, like it's the wrong shade of red. But there will be something. It will show up. Catching those involved in trafficking or spotting those being trafficked relies on cross-communication between countries, airlines and worldwide security services such as Interpol. In this case, concerned check-in staff at the departing gate have flagged the passenger to UK border force and with the flight due on stand shortly, Bob needs to brief his team. So we've got a flight coming in from the Middle East. We've got a passenger on it who's been a bit suspicious on his arrival at the gates. He's arrived at the gate late. When questioned, he's been monosyllabic in his answers. This is the gentleman that we'll be looking for, and that's the document he's travelling on. Possibility of a facilitator or possibility of an imposter travelling on that document. So can we make sure that we're gloved up for this? Yep. Briefing over, time to get in position and wait for the plane to arrive. Heathrow isn't just the biggest border for people. It also imports and exports 106 billion pounds worth of goods every year. From Rolls-Royce engines to life-saving transplants, it's the highest value of goods at any port in the UK. Most of Heathrow's cargo comes in on passenger planes, with the rest transported by dedicated cargo aircraft. Emirates being one of the largest operators in the world. Hello! I have come to you from some pretty abstract places, but this, this is, is up there. Uh, I am currently airside. Uh, and this excitable uh, man, a Mr. JWW, is waiting for a unique piece of cargo to arrive. I'm an automotive YouTube, where I basically travel the world filming supercars and upload them to YouTube. This afternoon, his own car will be delivered via an Emirates 777 freighter. If you're not a car fan, uh, the car that's landing today is a Ferrari. Uh, it's called a 458 Speciale. Um, title Speciale because it was the last of its kind. Flying a car to Dubai and back costs about 20 grand. That's about as much as buying a brand new Ford Fiesta 1.6, but not quite as much as a Ferrari Speciale. I bought the car at two, 260,000, and it's now worth about 330,000. So in terms of you know, cars aren't always a waste of money. For Emirates Vice President Dennis, shipping supercars around the world is big business. Well, there's a lot of cars moving around the world. We probably move in the region of 150 cars every single month with Emirates. A lot of the people that want to do that typically come from the Middle East. I'm sorry to cut this short. That's got to be our plane. Hey. <laughs> That's got to be our plane. It may look like any other Boeing 777, but inside these dedicated cargo planes are no seats or tray tables. <laughs> that is an absurd view. Every vestige of passenger travel has been removed and replaced with strengthened floors and bigger doors to carry serious amounts of cargo. I need to consume a thesaurus <laughs> to come up with a few more descriptive words. So this 777 yeah. can carry 100 tonnes of cargo. It's madness, man. Yeah. Shall we take a look? Yeah. And as well as a Ferrari on board, the 100 tonnes also includes other freights such as pharmaceuticals, plane engine parts and three race horses. When we load in Dubai, the horses are loaded last and then the first to come off. And as you can see, we've got special made horse stalls or boxes on the plane, That's which means the horse is comfortable at the right temperature. And you can see the grooms on board. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and the best on board. So you have an inbuilt stable. Completely. So ridiculous. <laughs> Next up are 596 horses, well, horsepower, in the shape of the Ferrari Speciale. I guess from an, from an outsider's point of view, a bright red Ferrari can look pretty ob obnoxious. Uh, but for me, it's much more about the people that you meet through cars, uh, just some of the most magnificent, wonderful people I've met. Um, so yeah, special car for me, special car for petrol heads on an equally special journey. Listen, thank you so much for everything. Well, let me know when you want to fly out again. I will do. Maybe Go next James. month. Enjoy. Thanks. It's good, man. It's cool. Still sounds good. As one foreign import swiftly clears customs, 
Passengers on a plane arriving from the Middle East are about to be stopped by Border Force Bob and his team, who are looking for a potential criminal. Remember, we're probably looking for, if not an imposter, a facilitator. He's probably only bringing in one or two per people. We did a similar operation to this about six months ago. It was a facilitator. The last person off the plane had no passport. So, it may be that the person that we encounter either has a document that has been altered and therefore it could become part of a court case. We need to ensure the security of the evidence so we don't want too many fingerprints all over it. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please have your passports open and ready for inspection. Thank you, sir. Step through, please. The man they're looking for is a potential people trafficker. Which means there could be others on board travelling on false documents. So Bob and Cat have to be vigilant. Thank you, madam. Keep it moving okay. as quick as. Can you have your passport open, please? Thank you. We're trying to scan the queue, see if there's anybody that's trying to evade a look from us, <laughs> evade their passport being checked, and at the same time get these passengers through as quickly as possible. The suspect has been spotted amongst the crowd. Coming up at the top of the stairs now, Cat. Have your passports ready for inspection, please, ladies and gentlemen. Bob gets ready to stop him. Britain has over 140 air and seaports protecting its border. Heathrow Airport is its biggest. All right, sir, so if I can ask you to go down there. It's all right, he'll catch you up, he'll catch you up. And everyone landing here has to go through immigration. How old are you, young man? Five. Oh. Have a safe trip. Take care. All the best. Welcome back. Can we pass over ready, please? In some circumstances, Border Force need to intercept passengers before the immigration hall. Ladies and gentlemen, could you have your passports out, take them out, open them up, ready for the officers to look at your pictures, please? These passengers are being checked over by Border Force Bob. Right, just travelling on your own. Thank you very much, sir. Three you go. Thank you very much. Following a tip-off that there may be a potential people trafficker on board, Bob's looking for anyone that could be travelling with the suspect, either willingly or not. In the queue now, Richard. Sir, can you just come over here for me? OK, we just, we just need to do some checks on your passport. Can I ask you to just wait there, so we're just going to check this flight, and then we'll talk to you, OK? Last year, it was reported there were over 5,000 trafficked people living in the UK, with over 2,000 of them children. Sorry, the two children are both your children? Yes, they are. OK. If you are travelling in future, madam, because they're a different surname, Make sure you carry a copy of birth certificate for us. I do have one. Well done, well done. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier for us. Yeah. We, just, we just want to make sure the children are safe, that's all it is. That's fine, thank you. Thank you, madam. Last one? Yeah, it's the last one. No problem. With all passports checked and no fake documents found, it means there are no passengers that have been trafficked. Bob now has to find out if the suspect is an imposter before he gets on his next flight. Are you travelling on your own today, sir? Are you travelling alone? Yes, sir. Where are you flying to next? Oslo. Oslo. OK, and where, where have you been today? Egypt or somewhere no. else? Just Egypt? You've not been anywhere else apart from Egypt? Can we have a look in the bag, sir? Bob stopped this man because intelligence at his departing country flagged him as a threat. So how long did you say you've been in Egypt for? No, four weeks. Four weeks. It's down to him and his team not only to scrutinise his passport and belongings, but also to make sure his story adds up. So when did you buy this ticket, sir? Today. Today? Yes. OK, so why, why did you leave it such short notice? Mm -hmm. It's not normal no, for somebody to just jump on a plane and fly. I lost salary. Salary? From your job? Ah, in... Mm -hmm. in Oslo, yes. In Oslo? What do you do? Who do you, who do you work for in Oslo? I work in uh, something like 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven? Oh, like a... Um, like something... A convenience Narcissan. store? Narcissan. Convenience store. Yeah. The technique Bob's using is rapid questioning, so he can check for inconsistencies. Have you got no baggage? You got baggage going through to Oslo? Another one in the taxi. You forgot one in the taxi. Oh dear. All right, sir. If you just look at me straight on, put your head up. Mm -hmm. All three officers examine the passport against the man's face. Okay, so sorry, it's just my turn now. Just look straight ahead for me, please. Lost a little bit of weight? Not faced, is it? No. No. 
Have you ever been stopped when you've been travelling before, sir? Thailand. And Thailand. What were you doing in Thailand? I visited uh, my family. Family in Thailand? So you flew with Etihad that time, yeah? Etihad, yes. Yeah. The rules are Bob has to find something in his documents or luggage that give evidence to him being a threat in order to detain or arrest him. At least to me, he's answered part of the question. Why well, he's got a baggage. They can find nothing to prove he's either an imposter or a people trafficker. There's your documents, sir. Follow the purple signs. Flight connections, Terminal 2. They have to let him go. He was far too calm. He's up to something. I mean, well, that... he leaves a bag in the car and doesn't get distressed about it. And... Yeah, student, working in a convenience store, trips to Thailand, trips to Egypt for four weeks, picking up a ticket at the last minute. Uh, he's, he's up to something. Up. It doesn't add up, but there was nothing near it. I mean, it was definitely him. It was definitely his passport. Mm -hmm. He didn't seem at all phased by the fact that he'd been stopped by three officers in uniform. And I would have expected that. But when we talked to him, there was nothing in his bags, there was nothing in his hand luggage that gave us reason to hold him any more than we did. Border Force will now have to make sure this passenger doesn't try and leave the airport. They'll also alert the authorities in Norway that he's coming their way. Just outside the immigration hall is the five miles of runway that's looked after by the talented boys and girls of airside operations. OK, off we go. And it's another training day for plane spotter and rookie airside operative Ian. We're leader five, are we, all? Uh, leader four, because he's got number four written on it, Ian. His trainer, Simon, has worked on the airfield for over 27 years and is a stickler for accuracy. Give me um, some, some, some clues as to how we can identify that that's a, a triple seven. Uh, this is a triple seven for one that obviously the window, the front window, has an angle, so it slightly goes up. You've got the three wheels on the undercarriage. I think the biggest clue, though, the biggest clue for me, is the fact that it actually says Boeing 777-300ER. <laughs> Ian's halfway through his 10-week airside operatives course, and being able to identify aircraft is key when communicating with others working on and around the airfield. OK, Ian, I'd like you to carry out a runway crossing for me. I'll do the driving. But if you can demonstrate the radio for me, please. To cross a runway needs special communication. With hundreds of vehicles on the airfield at any one time, from small cargo buggies to the double-decker A380, all movements have to be coordinated by the ever-present eye of the tower. There's people like that. You might hold short of 27 left. There's landing traffic. And on duty is senior air traffic controller, Jules. So a significant part of the airfield is classed as free ranging. So vehicles can go on their own lookout around the airfield. They don't have to talk to us. But certain areas are not free ranging. So for example, any runway or any departure point would not be free ranging. So they need to speak to us then to ask for permission to enter a runway or permission to go through an area that's not free ranging. A plane lands every 45 seconds, so between Ian and the tower, they have to coordinate a window in which to cross. So just run through what you're going to say to me first. And there's no time for Ian to mince his words. Today will be good. OK. So the tower, tower checker. Checker, pass your message. Tower checker holding it to runway, to, short of runway 27 left at Sierra 5 Whiskey to cross runway 27 left. Uh, it's all right. Bring it down a bit. Bring it down a bit. Tower checker. Checker, pass your message. Holding short, Sierra 5 Whiskey. What are you going to do? What are you asking? To cross runway 27 left. That's it. Practice time over. It's now Ian's first time to talk to air traffic control. Tower checker. Checker. Checker holding short, Sierra 5 Whiskey to cross runway 27 left. Checker behind the landing, British Airways 747, cross 27 left behind. Behind the landing, British Airways 747, clear to cross 27 left. Really good. It still sounds a little bit robotic. Is that a 747? Yes, it is. Okay. And is it landing? 
It's definitely landing there. Okay, so that's our clearance. Still check, look right, look left. What are you going to say when we get to the other side? Check if OK to two some left. Start with tower. Tower lead four, fake 80, two seven left. Next on the list, trainer Simon is going to teach Ian how to deal with airport trespassers. Those who are flying without a ticket. So the weapon, just as a reminder, is something that is not actually going to be shooting anything other than a two-stage firecracker okay. that's basically going to make a loud noise. Okay. And that loud noise is just to move on the, 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 the birds. Shoot the birds. Okay. Well, I'm not sure, Ian, is it whether there are any birds here at the moment or not. Until we fire the gun, we won't know. For the 1,300 flights that take off and land here every day, bird strikes are the biggest hazard. They cause serious engine damage and on takeoff can even force planes to make emergency landings. So it'll be a daily job for Ian... One in the chamber. ..to keep the little birds away from the big birds. Closed. Just check around me. Check the wind finally. You raised the goal, look. Weapon closed. <laughs> Very good. Done the job effectively. Buoyed from his good shot, Ian shows off his own special technique to locate his feathered friends. If you do that, you'll channel the sound wave into your hand, into, into the actual ear, so it's just a way of actually listening. If you actually want to track properly, you could do one like that and one like that. That's only you're out in the woods. Come on, Ian, we've got training to do. 